Hello everyone and welcome to another Market Talk series. Today we have the privilege and honor to have Mr. Art with us, William Art. And it's a really exciting, I can say, and a bit more special this Market Talk event as uh, William, uh, William um, hosts an event and that I was a guest few few months ago and right. today i have the privilege and honor to uh host this uh, market talks with uh with william william is the president of the international federation of technical analysis he's an uh, exceptional trader and investor he teaches more than twenty thousand students so far and uh it will be an exciting exciting um conversation or uh, discussion today if you prefer and uh, I'm sure we're going to learn a lot from this gentleman and yeah William very uh, welcome to our market talk uh, event here at Admirals how are you doing Theo, thank you so much I'm great because you know um, it's always a pleasure meeting you talking with you you know that's like 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 it is, you know, as befriended colleagues, it's always a pleasure. So I'm really looking forward to our talk, our discussion. So and of course, I'm happy to share some, you know, some experiences, ideas and knowledge, maybe some wisdom as well. Let's see. Absolutely. <laughs> so I would like to start first by asking you, what did make you to get into the trading world? Oh my, well, what can I say? You know, the people usually try to tell really smart stories about this. For me, it's just like, you know, I was so freaking bored back then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just browsing the web. Well, actually back then I was a sales manager at a big, big, big clothing brand like real designer brand yep. and I was stuck in my showroom waiting for clients browsing the web and guess what I just came across a financial website and this website listed the winners and losers of the day and these yep. were not just winners and losers these were winners of like let's say 300 percent a day wow. winners and you can imagine as a sales guy I felt like what is this? <laughs> Why am I sitting here and not doing this? What I didn't know back then was it was high leverage products. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, yep. For the reason they were so high up. And of course, when I started then trying to trade like this, oh my God, I lost so much money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because of that. Yeah. Makes sense. And you went a bit aggressive, I assume, from the description. You went a bit aggressive to go all in and try yeah. to buy that house or that car. You know, yeah, um, not, not really that way. It's in terms of, you know, like nowadays, everybody wants to go for the Lambo. No, just kidding. But, you know, it's like, oh, I get which <laughs> quick. But that, that wasn't the idea. And still, it's not the idea I focus yeah. on when it comes to trading. From my terms, my point of view, trading is not about, I have to get rich right now. Yeah. This can happen, obviously, and of course, and it's also very welcome, but it's more about having the means and the possibilities really to live your own lives on your, on your own terms, whatever you feel like the right life is for you. Yeah. And trading gives you the support to do so. And mm -hmm. the moment you are able to, you know, to, to generate money on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, whatever, just by sitting yep. on, on, on your computer on your screen by trading, this is the moment where you're completely free, right? Yes. So then you're already rich because you can make money whenever you want. That's the idea I have with trading. Yeah, also. And what kind of trader you are are you an intraday are a scalper or 
you do swing trading. Can you please explain us a little oh. bit what sort of trading yeah. style? Oh yeah, I mean, basically, I'm I'm. I would so much like to say that I'm a swing trader. Turns out I'm a scalper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I'm I'm trading intraday, and of course my trades are they are designed to, to be swing trades. But you know, then then you'd say, okay, maybe I I want to exit this position right now and just secure my profits. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, whenever you say, okay, I want to have the real the big swings you end up pretty often just not exactly having them, but going out break even or coming back to the point where you could have exited before with, yes. you know, with a targeted profit as a scalper. So I would say I'm a swing scalper. Okay. Yeah. Totally, totally understand. And um, so do you mainly trade uh, currencies or stocks, indices, commodities? Can you please walk us through a little bit uh, so yeah. people, they know what, uh, what sort see, of... Uh, yeah, also here, I would love to say I'm, I'm so much doing all the, all the screening on stocks and trying to figure out what is the best and the right one. But then, well, I'm, I'm an intraday trader. I'm trading just, you know, I try to catch the move and get the points. And therefore, I'm trading futures and CFDs. So I'm more into indices because, you know, these guys are always moving. Yes. And if you sit in front of, let's say one or two markets, then it's already enough. And yes. the, the question always is, uh, if, 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 uh, if I can go deeper a bit here. Sure, so sure. Why, why, why an index? So, you know, basically, first of all, a lot of people, they, they, they have too many charts on the screen. Second, they focus, uh, they, they screen and, you know, they, they, they try to find the best trade. But what they always forget is that the moment you sit in front of your chart of your market, this market moves and it moves slowly, then it moves faster, it moves up, it moves down, it moves sideways. So no matter what kind of strategy you're trading, you will have your setup at least once a day. If not, you have the wrong setup, of course, because as the markets move, usually in general, you can expect every setup at least once a day. My trading strategy is designed to appear, let's say, at least four times a day. Awesome, Even more, awesome. Maybe. So do you look any like Euro US dollar pair or pound US dollar, uh, or do you prefer to just focus on the indices, let's say on the FTSE 100 and the DAX? Now I just focus on well, you know, my thoughts were were were, the, were those. I was thinking about first of all, okay, I want to make money and I want to live from trading. So how much money do I need at all, right? So then if okay, I need let's say I need let's say I need ten thousand dollar. So you can add zeros or you know, yeah. but yeah, let's say I need ten thousand dollars. So when I'm a day trader and I trade like four weeks a month. This is $2,500 a month before tax also. So we're not talking tax. So, and if I have $2,500 a week, this equals $500 profit a day. I mean, this is a simple, basic calculation. And then the question is, okay, what can I trade? What I, can I look for when I want to have $500? a day. I need a volatile market, right? So, and what kind of market will give this to me? And what I felt like this is the most volatile market, which is out there when it comes to, you know, to the basic or, or classic ones. And that's for me is a NASDAQ 100. Because... Wow! See? <laughs> I love the way you, you right? start the conversation and maybe yeah. the people they were thinking... Ah, he's going to say something, he's going to say something, but you are, that's so, so amazing. So yeah. amazing, honestly. Because, you know, you can easily get wow. 10, 20 points in one move with a NASDAQ. 
But of course, you have to apply your risk management as well. But yes. if the fund, if if the Nasdaq runs, it runs. You have the move, and then you know it it exhausts and then comes back. So you want to get out. So as you as I'm a swing scalper, something like that, you know. Yes. I, I can get the 10, 20 points. And now let's say if you go with the futures, twenty dollar a point, I need exactly twenty five points. Period. So when things are good, I'm done with one trade. If things are bad, like first one is a loser, okay, we have to talk. And then I have to wait for the next situation. But as it is so volatile going up, going down, you know, I have some kind of opportunities to find my trades and therefore make my money. Perfect. Fantastic. So that's so, why no, no currency pairs and no other markets, just that one. And I'm just wait and sit there and wait. Okay. So the other question now, do you have any specific time frame you enter the market? Sure. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. I have uh, usually a trade to five minutes chart because this offers not too many opportunities, which is very important because if you go one minute, you have so many signals and lots of them, they are false ones. So you make too many trades and it's quite stressy. So I prefer um, sitting on a five minute chart. This means I can look also at another, another window and doing something else like writing mails or something like that without losing, you know, sight on the markets and missing some signals. So that's basically uh, the idea. Of course, it's it's very important to do, you know, like the triple screen, you go from daily to hourly and then see where, where are we going with five minutes. And then it's also important to see um, what kind of trend are we talking about, you know, on the, on the higher time frame, the lower time frame, where resistance is, where support zones. And once I know that, it's pretty easy to know where I have to exit the, the trade, even though my, my strategy would uh, suggest something else. But if I'm coming with my trade to a support zone, you know, when I go short or to, to um, a resistance zone, when I go long, it's better to exit. So therefore, five minutes for me is perfect. Okay. I would like to go deeper into your strategy and right. uh, to analyze a little bit when you said from daily to hourly to five minutes support resistance and so on. Uh -huh. And uh, can I ask you something? Are there, before we go to more details, mm -hmm. do you look to trade NASDAQ at uh, a certain time of a day? Did you find any time of correlation with volatility like uh, during this period of time? there is more solid moves, regardless if the move is going to end up a sideway move, mm -hmm. up or down. Uh, we are not talking about win when do you find the winners? No, because we know that doesn't exist. But yeah. uh, do you find times that Nasdaq moves on a better uh, at certain times? Well, there are two answers to one question. So, Actually, I have two hearts beating in my chest right now. So if you go to, let's say, to the European session, NASDAQ is quite easy to handle. The volatility isn't that high. And quite often, it just goes up and down, you know, moving sideways in nice swings, providing a couple of points here, providing a couple of points there, which is perfect because without the, this, this crazy and mad volatility with market opens, where everything can happen, you know, and everything is possible, you cannot find any situations to trade there if you're not totally like, you know, out of your mind. So these the the, the pre-markets like the european session are very calm and quiet and very easy and good to handle but here they don't offer, offer that much volatility that you have like okay 10 15 20 points it's just you know going up and down sideways um the best time maybe is around open like let's say uh, 9 30 eastern time so it's nothing wrong going 9.30 and seeing all the, you know, all the volatility coming in. You see big, huge candles green, the next one, big, huge candle red and so on. 
But when market finds direction, there's there are very good opportunities that my strategy can be applied. So this is something around 9.30 and two hours later, something, let's say, around 11. So let's say 90 to 120 minutes after market open. These are my times. And basically, this should, should be efficient and enough. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. I'm sure that people will appreciate a lot that I see some very interesting questions on the chat, but we're going to leave some time towards the end. And um, so can you walk us through a little bit more on your strategy? Like right. um, first, thing, first thing you do when you decide that, okay, today I'm, I'm, I'm going to open the uh, computer, my platform, I'm going to look for opportunities. So mm -hmm. what do you actually do if that's okay to share it with us today yes of course i'm not shy in sharing my strategies actually on my website you can find them also for free just to see there are videos you just can click and watch without anything giving you know no information no data nada it's just you know my main strategy is called the expander strategy and this one is basically built from bollinger bands and candlestick signals so the idea is to catch the volatility and see where volatility comes to an end. That's, that's why I expand it, because if you overstretch it, you know, if you just open one hand, it just snaps. <laughs> it's yeah. like that. And that's the idea, to find the reversal. And uh, with the candlesticks, I see that the reversal is already happening. The market participants really, they just go that way and they turn things over and just go the opposite direction. So this is something where I say, okay, I'm going with a swing. And then it's, well, it's just a matter of the volatility as well. It's because where do I put my profit target? And this is always connected with the Bollinger Bands. And sometimes it's the middle of the Bollinger Bands, the simple moving average 20. And sometimes it's the other side, which is then the perfect swing. And then very often you see that the price then reverses again. And this is the swing I try to catch. And if I'm not so, you know, so, so, so keen on waiting, I just exit everything on the middle of the Bollinger Bands. Okay. So that's, that's my basic. And uh, from that going on, there are two more strategies just by following the market's move. Awesome. Awesome. What about when you said you are looking on the daily chart? Yeah. Uh, for example, daily chart, it's in a smooth uptrend. Mm -hmm. And I see also many traders, they get a little bit uh, misunderstanding with how to read the market. So mm -hmm. they see in one time frame an uptrend, they see another time frame a downtrend, and they are thinking, okay, should I buy, should I sell, should I look for bullish or bearish opportunities now? Can you... Explain us a little bit what sort of uh, ideal picture you want to see on the higher time frame and then going to the one hour chart, as you said, and then to the five minute chart for execution. Sure. sure, I'm happy to do so. So first of all, if you look at the daily chart, most important, first of all, to see is where are the, the important resistance and support zones, mm -hmm. because you can be pretty sure that everybody in the market is looking at those. So if you find in your five-minute chart, if you find an entry, which is very close to the next resistance, for example, and you want to buy, you can be pretty sure that your trade will not go set that far yeah. on a normal basis. Of course, there are exemptions, but you know, on a normal, normal, normally, it's, it's just a loser because you're just buying into resistance. But if you see something like, you know, with my expander strategy and you see the reversal sign and you want to go long and you see this reversal sign on a support on a daily time frame, you can be assured that everybody's looking at this and that you have a good chance to, you know, just to follow through and that not just you are looking at this, but a lot of other market participants as well following that move. So what we are looking for is follow through, right? In the moves and that the market just, you know, goes up and up and up. 
And this is most likely to happen if you have this on the right spot. So therefore, daily chart is very important. So second one, if you go with, with the trend of the daily chart and you see support and resistance over there, and let's say you have an uptrend and price drops to a very important support zone, then you can go in the direction of the uptrend and also you have all the chances on your side as well. So this is the next one. And now let's say you have an uptrend in in the daily chart and you have in the hourly, hour, in your hour, hourly chart, you have a downtrend and a five minute chart, you have an uptrend again. So what does this mean? So what we are talking about right now are fractures of the market. So this means you have the overall trend, the general trend, the long-term trend, which is daily and also the weekly chart. These are the impulse moves, moves of, the, of the trend. And as we have impulse moves, we also have correction moves. Uh, correction and moves which are going to the opposite direction of course it's a correction and it's very easy to see and to understand that if you are going into a correction in the daily chart you you're very likely to see this in the hourly chart as well that's number one and then if you go deeper in your time frame and go from hourly to five minutes you might have the correction of the downtrend happening in the five minutes chart and this is if you put everything together this is what you can see then in the charts as this higher high and higher low thing or vice versa because you have impulse correction impulse correction and this is what gets clustered in the different time frames awesome awesome and then you mentioned you're using Bollinger bands and um, and candlesticks uh, mm -hmm. to, I assume, to execute your trades, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So, ideally, what you looking, what information you want to extract from the Bollinger bands and the candle lines? Oh, the idea is pretty interesting and for me it's really it's you know it's it's very convincing so the point is if you look at modern bollinger bands and you you know where they're coming from because from the bell curve and from you know from some kind of um uh, distribution it's just about the probability of what well, simple simple results of of you know random results and the probability of having random results in the majority is somewhere between 90 percent of the standard deviation um minus two and, and plus two and this is what john bollinger also figured out when he developed his bollinger bands and the idea here is to see that most of the prices in the market are within the bands which means 90% of the prices are within the bands. And what I'm looking for is pr are prices outside of the bands, like upper or lower bands. And I like to see that market participants try to, to bring those prices back into the bands. Let's say they make the reversal. And if, if we look at, well, the, the probabilities over there, and let's say you have 90% of all prices within the bands. This means you have just 10% maximum outside of the bands. And this is the moment where you see the prices are overstretched already. The moves are overstretched. And the probability for a reversal is very high already in these zones. And if you look at Bollinger Bands and see the prices, every time prices go outside, they tend to return. But the question is, when? When is this happening? <laughs> and if you look at the candlesticks, you see this is already happening right now. Yeah. So I want to see a hammer. I want to see a shooting star, something like that. And then I know that what I was waiting for is about to happen and it's going on right now, which can give me an excellent risk reward ratio because 
if from the definition of the candlesticks, what you can do, you just place your stop loss above the high of the of the shooting star or behind beyond the low of the um, of the hammer, and then you have the whole stretch to go for the reversal. And that's the idea I'm following. Wow! So you gave to the audience two very important, actually everything is very important, but two right. very um, uh, very important um, uh, things about your strategy is like you want to see the price move outside of the bands. Yeah. Higher chances is that price it's going to retrace back to the to the mean, let's say, or within the bands. Mm -hmm. And you want to find that reversal candle line price action or the pattern that it's going to indicate that exactly. this move is going to happen from time from moment to moment. That's that's wow, amazing. I'm sure from uh, tomorrow's and on Monday on the live trading webinar, people they will ask me, okay, let's uh, try a villain strategy. Let's do let's it. Let's find it. <laughs> yeah. For sure, we're going to do it. Why not? Absolutely. And thanks so much for um, generously sharing this uh, with, with us here at Admirals. Yes, I'm happy and to do so. I also, let's just go to a little bit subject now. I uh -huh. also find out, not only from our discussion, but from your website and from your videos and on YouTube, you are a pretty yeah. famous uh, personality in the industry of, of trading. I find out then very interesting that you talk a lot about trading psychology. Right. It's so <laughs> Oh my. Because you know why? Because if you if you you know there will be a, a moment where you feel very comfortable with all the technical analysis and everything. I know. And and of course it, you 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 never need to stop learning what when it comes to about technical analysis, but there will be a time of feel very comfortable. But from my experience, oh my the, the the main thing I I am working on still until tomorrow and the day after and today is my own trading psychology. Because guess what? We are humans, we're we are emotional beings. So we have to work on this on a daily basis because market is challenging us day by day. Also, and when I believe a big part of trading psychology comes also with a risk management uh -huh. uh, because traders who have the tendency, let's say, to... Um, not pay attention to risk management and let's face it when you are in front of the screen and you become so intense to enter to trade sometime you just forget the big picture you True. just see only the candle lines but you forget that i okay we are trading a retracement back to the mean we are trading a correction here or we are within the trend of a lower time frame, not a higher time frame. And, and people, they just uh, get frustrated and then they get into that mode. Okay, should I close a trade? You I say on this trade? And that starts creating those emotions that we really don't want to, um, to have them in a while we're trading, correct? Exactly. Can you walk us through a little bit of that uh, trader's behavior and maybe a few tips from your experience and from what you teach and coach to traders. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, well, you know, when, when it comes to risk management, so the question always is, what, what is risk management about anyway? You know, so a lot of people, they mistaken it. They feel like, OK, it's, it's money management, but it's not true. Risk management is risk management. The money management is money management. And these are two different things, two sides of one coin, maybe this means your account. So when it comes to be a trader or when it comes to, you know, to plan your trading, first of all, you have to feel about and think about what am I willing to risk? What am I willing to lose? What am I willing 
you know, the set on fire. And this is a question that usually people really say that, yeah, no problem, $100, no problem, 100 euro, yeah, no problem for me. You know, yeah. but when I'm some, you know, when I'm speaking at at an at an expo or a fair, you know, something or a conference, I always ask the audience, okay, guys, who can afford losing one hundred dollar? Because what everybody is like, yeah, me, no problem, it's no problem for me. And then I ask them, okay, who want to give me one hundred dollar? And you can wow. imagine, I never went out of the room with a hard one hundred dollar bill. Nobody wanted to give this to me, not because of me, because it's more that. When you know when when the market asks you to give one hundred dollar, you're not so comfortable about anymore. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something a lot of people they don't get it, and this is why if your risk is too high, you literally freak out when you get challenged to lose this. So first of all, you have to be very comfortable with the money you set on fire. That's number one. And number two is a lot of people mistake this as well, is how much do I get for this money in terms of position size? And position size is that one that kills you. If you go too high, if you have a lot of, you know, a huge position because you're greedy, well, guess what happens? This one goes against you and you lose a lot of money and do this one time and then you're completely out of your mind because this is like a huge slap from the market. And as we are human beings and we are emotional, we tend to look for revenge. And this one means like, okay, now I'm going in even deeper, which kills your account immediately on a regular basis. So this is why people have to be aware of what am I willing to lose and how much do I really want to buy or sell in terms of position size? And everything else comes after that. Like, when do I take my profit? Because if you look at the chart, prices go up, everybody's happy as a buyer, you know, and then the prices reverse and all your profits are gone and you're challenged to be break even. Do you really want to sit through your, to your stop loss? Of course not, right? So we need a profit target as well or some kind of rule where to exit the market when we had a profit and a lot of people don't have this either so that's what we definitely need in order to behave professional whenever we are trading and this one is from my point of view and also from my personal experience it's the hardest thing to learn wow professional behavior right yeah because many many traders they get a bit confused i'm a professional trader They think it's a trader who sits in front of the screen 25 hours a day. Yeah. But uh, as you very well stated, this professional trader is the trader who has the discipline to understand the game and play with the rules of the game exactly. and uh, not the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Can you please, I see it lot of questions coming out with mm -hmm. question marks. Um, can you explain a little bit what's the difference between what you just said, uh, how much money you are willing to lose and, um, and just give one example, for example, to make it clear for, for everyone? Um, in, in terms of risk and money management? Or, yes, or yes. Okay, so risk management, so it's pretty, so it's what, what I already uh, stated, is that you really have to be aware how much money do you want to want to really put into fire? Like, what am I willing to risk? When it comes to money management, and I wrote a whole book about this, by the way, so so for that reason, because it's it's really, people need to see this and they need to understand this. So when you talk about risk management, you want to protect your account and you want to protect every single trade that you don't risk too much. When it comes to money management, you want to do the best with your account. And also you want to be better as a trader. So you, so I, I introduced in my book, uh, some, uh, uh, yeah, let's say a graphic. So it causes money management metrics. And this is about uh, the risk you take over. This is about the risk reward ratio. It's about your hit rate. 
and your trade frequency. And if you take a closer look to these four elements of this matrix, you will see that, for example, if you aim for a very high risk reward ratio, you will, you will experience that you have a very low hit rate by definition, right? So, yes. And yep. vice versa. So if you say, I'm going to, I like to have a high hit rate, you have to be aware that you will have like, let's say, a risk reward ratio of 1, 0 0.8, 1 1.3, something like this. Yep. But you will never go with a high hit rate to 3.0. This will yes. not happen. Right. Yeah. So this is something you have to keep in mind. And also if you work on, yeah, okay. So I'm, I, I have very high risk and you have a high trading frequency. You're about to go broke yes. <laughs> for that reason. Unavailable. And, yeah. yeah. Right. And if you look at high, high, uh, high risk reward ratio and uh, let's say a low trading frequency, you know that you are very picky. In, in, in the choice of your trades, or if you look at a high um, trading frequency, you also can be aware that you that that your hit rate will not be the best. It cannot be by definition; that's not possible. So this means, uh, looking at these four terms, what you can do is you can figure out where am I good at, where do I have my weaknesses, and where do I have my strengths, and then you can work on it as your own coach. And by doing this, you can also start planning your income as a trader. Because the the thoughts I presented, why do I trade the Nasdaq? You know, coming from ten thousand over you know over the week, two thousand five hundred, five hundred a day, is exactly this. So if you put over the the money management metrics, and then you feel like, okay, I have one percent risk, for example, and I want to have like like five hundred a day. And I can afford, let's say, one you know, one percent. I have, uh, let's say, fifty thousand dollar account. This is five hundred dollar, you know, as a risk. Maybe it's a little bit high, but anyway, you know, so it's five hundred dollar risk. So I need one winner a day, at least, at least if it's the first one, you know. Otherwise, it, it starts. So you can start to calculate and see. Okay, if I do like five trades, I have fifty percent hit rate. I have a risk reward ratio of let's say two or one point five. When I risk this one percent, then you feel like okay. So now I can can start to manage my money by doing so. Wow, that's very uh, crystal clear uh, process. The way you explain it, and uh, I hope that people they're going to apply it because. It's not just to hear and learn something, it's also to put it in, into application. Right. Um, and how do you deal with, um, with, let's say, if you get two, three, four, five, six uh, losses in a row, um, if that happened with your strategy? Mm -hmm. Because what happens with my strategy, because I have... Uh, on the swing trading, I have three to one minimum as a reward to risk, then I can afford to get seven, eight, nine losses in a row and just still be in the game and keep keep on going. That's because right. I, I'm trading this for years and years and uh, uh, I just need 30 to 33 uh, winners out of 100 and uh, I'm fine with that. But with your trading system, how does it work and how do you deal with, uh, with the situations? Yeah. So first of all, this situation is the worst situation a trader can be in because having a losing streak is really challenging for your mind and also for your account. So you see money just going down, 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 and then you still have to be able to open the next trade. So this is very, very challenging, no doubt about it. So using my strategy, the expander, and by the definition of where can I apply this? Because, you know, when, when prices, let's say, um, I'm waiting for a long reversal. So the requirement here is that the prices go down. Um, first of all, we have a down move and the prices drop outside of the Bollinger Bands. And the moment I see a reversal, 
which is really valid, um, I open this trade. But when I get stopped out and the price drops even further and I see the next one, the next reversal, I have to open a trade. But if you look at the chart, even though let, let's say you have a you, you have a weekly chart corona crash, like back in 2020, where prices we had a really this was a crash, so three weeks down. And then you see, if you look at it in in, in every market, by the way, but let's talk about the DAX. So what you see there is a huge hammer showing that's it. See? Outside of the Bollinger Bands, by the way. And if you miss that one, the next week you have a huge green candle, both candles together forming a bullish engulfing. Okay, this one has a 1,000 point <laughs> stop loss. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I mean, we're talking about weekly chart and we're talking about high volatility, but anyway. So this means that every crash or every rally has a natural end. And if I have one loser, okay. If I have two losers, okay. If I have three losers, okay. But what I know is that this reversal will happen. All I need to make sure is that I'm still there when this happens. That mm -hmm. I'm still able to open the trade. And this is where risk management comes into place again. Awesome. And... Does your strategy, that's an, another question, by the way, because we change subjects and um, mm -hmm. I read the questions coming, I try to ask some of the questions as well along the way. Yeah. And uh, does your strategy has more than 50% winning ratio? Yeah. Okay, awesome. By definition, let's see. So if, if you go back to the theory of Bollinger Bands, 10% it's somewhere in between. If you go really with the definition of the bell curve, it's like 95.6% are between 0, 2, and uh, minus 2, and plus 2 of the standard deviation. If you ask John Bollinger, it's like 88, 90, 89%, like, like 90% are inside and 10% are outside. So we have something of all prices between 5 and maximum 10% outside of the Bollinger Bands. So this is one, you know, one statistic over there What when it comes to hit rate. And if you go with the candlesticks, hammer and shooting star, dark cloud cover, piercing pattern, bullish engulfing, they have a hit rate of 60% each. When it comes to the bearish engulfing, this one has a hit rate alone of 80%. So this means if you could put both together, by definition, you have a high hit rate, but of course, it's not 100%. It will never be. But you have something, and I never measured this because you know it's also the matter when you exit your trade. Of course, Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So if you don't take a profit, you, you will have losers by definition someday, right? So it's somewhere, let's say, about 60 to 80%. Awesome. Fantastic. And um, can you, uh, I will just start reading a few of the questions because uh -huh. going backwards and read the questions, we will forget. We're not going to understand, obviously, what are they uh, asking about. So, uh, guys, sorry, someone uh, wrote in... Uh, it's in French. Sorry, my friend, I cannot read French. <laughs> um, a question from Joe's. How do you identify those opportunities, please? Uh, how long How long took you to catch that spot of the market? Okay, swings, highs, and low pivot points. Okay, are you use do you use pivot points on your charts, or what? Uh, let's make yes it more generic. No. What sort of indicators, except the Bollinger Bands, of course. That's it. That's sometimes, it. Sometimes I I like to take a closer look at the slow stochastic, but it's just yeah. for you know having some kind of more confirmation, or maybe sometimes as a filter, but it's more. Well, it's it's more a side one. 
basically, I'm just looking at the Bollinger Bands and the candlesticks. Okay. So we, you will be looking, let's say, the stochastic as a momentum indicator just to see if there is exhaustion or something. Yeah, I just want to see, you know, when when I'm maybe, you know, when, when I have a situation where where I'm not so sure about what what does this mean to me or how how to how you know how to feel about this. I take a closer look at the slow sarcastic and to see I want to have it oversold or overbought in that area and then crossing each other. So that's a basic one. And also quite interesting if you have some kind of divergences as well. So this is also pretty pretty cool to see. But in general it's more the modern band for me and the candlestick. Cool. Um, let's read a little bit more. So that's an interesting question I can say come from Carlos. After trading successfully in a small scale, how can I increase position size? Or when it comes to the point that, uh, okay, I will start risking a little bit more and just to uh to be covered with that and be crystal clear mm -hmm. we not going to give any uh, personal or trading advice or any uh, business recommendation here exactly. purely from willan's perspective how would he increase the trading size right i mean in general if you just put out the mass let's say you start with Let's make it easy. So just for calculation, you can add zeros or you know can can put some away. Like let's say you have ten thousand dollar account or euro, doesn't matter. And you you trade for one year and you make like twenty percent profit. You end up with twelve thousand, right? Before tax. So not talking tax here. So what you can do now is you have one percent. So first you had one hundred dollar or euro as you know as a risk you can take over and then with one percent you have 120 dollar euro as a risk to take over so there's a growth in it unfortunately i know it's a very slow growth right? so that's that's a challenge we have if we don't have that big account what can we do of course you can raise your risk a bit but then you have to look at your numbers and the numbers are, okay, how is my hit rate? If you have a hit rate, which is higher than 50%, you can talk about raising your risk a bit, let's say from one to 1 1.5. If you have a 50% hit rate and let's say a risk reward ratio from all of your results on average of let's say 1.5, you can play around with that as well. And then by definition, you get higher results, right? So I made a calculation in my presentations about risk management and, and a lot of the book, I always show this and I talk about this. So as, as an idea, if you, let's say you go with a, with a money management matrix, you have 1% risk, you have 100 trades, you have a hit rate of 50% and you have a risk reward ratio of 1.5. Your profit will be 25%. Right, you can do the math. You can do this calculation, but just uh, just um, think about this. So, and now the question is, what can we change? So, let's say you have a higher higher. You wanna you maybe you have uh, the same account size, but you're very comfortable now in trading, and everything is works well for you. So, what you can do is you double your risk from one to two percent without changing any of the other four um, the things, you know? And what happens is that you double your profit, your performance with that. You come from 25 to 50%. And the same goes if you go from, you know, if you go from your risk reward ratio 1.5 as a target on average to a risk reward ratio of 2.0. But just by doing this, or if you have a higher hit rate, not 50% anymore, but 60%, with all these three things, you can double your profit. But of course, 
you need to be very disciplined to do so. And of course, market has to provide these situations. That's the most challenging part, by the way, right? That's why I don't want to talk about the idea, okay, you can double your trades. So, but, you know, if there are no trades, you cannot double them. So what, what can you say? So market has to offer it. And of course, this is the most difficult one. Yeah, absolutely. But it's also essential when you said there are four different aspects. Right take in consideration and you don't just say, okay, I'm going to increase, you're going to increase the size, trading size based on which element, right? Yeah. Yeah. And under no circumstances, I would suggest to go high on the risk of 2%. Because yeah. if you're on the wrong side of the trade, this goes like very fast. Yeah. And you're done. Yeah. Uh, the idea of using stop losses, mm -hmm. is it something you highly recommend and encourage traders to, yes. to do that? For sure. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is never ending discussions amongst traders and I really enjoy this one because both sides are right. The question always is in what kind of environment are you and what are you trading? For us, as we are trading with a lever, if you don't have a stop loss, you're screwed, period. Yep. If you're an investor and you go for, you know, I want to follow Warren Buffett's footsteps, you will never think about a stop loss because you're investing and you want to see lower prices to invest even more. It's a different story. Yep. And also, and in my podcast, I had a very, very interesting interview with Dr. Tom Starke from Australia. He's actually German, but he's living in Australia. He's a hedge fund manager. And we were discussing when I was back in, you know, when I was in Sydney, we we're sitting in his house and we had this discussion. And it was so funny because he said, yeah, I mean, I never use a stop loss. And then I asked him, or also in the interview, I asked him, okay, how is this possible? And then I, I understood what his, he was doing because he was in a constant position, just adding and lowering, but still a constant position. So, of course, he doesn't have a stop loss, but don't expect him to go down the drain with the money as a hedge fund manager. He just lowers the position or raises the position. That's it. Exactly. Right, or, but as as retail traders, we go in a trade, we get out of a trade. That's it. Period. Therefore, yeah. no stop loss, no account. That's exactly. It. Yeah, and it's a different mindset traders need to acquire. Right. To trade the financial markets or the equities and any leverage product. Let's put it more generic, right. rather than when we do investing, because yeah. yeah, as you said, you invest. Let's say. The Bitcoin is on 30,000 when it goes to 16,000 or to 10, you want to add more and more. So you kind of averaging the positions. Mm -hmm. But in trading, yes, it's the, we go in, we go out. Right. Uh, approaching towards the end of uh, our amazing discussion, I say, uh, do you recall any challenging moments in your trading career, something that maybe uh, you had that day where you either you made a lot of money in your perspective or you lost what you thought it will be uh, a good and you went through an emotional cycle. Can you recall something that you can share with us? Sure, I'm happy to do so. So all the experiences I made, you know, I'm, I, I write articles, I have speeches and talks, I write books. There's a reason for it. Because I experienced so many things where I felt like, oh man, I have to think about this. <laughs> right? yeah. So, especially risk management, risk and money management is so essential. And I thought a lot about this and I, I developed some, you know, some talk about this. And then I wrote a book about it because it's so essential. I thought so hard about how to solve it. And same is true for all, you know, for all the trading psychology. It's not just by reading a book. It's by experiencing and feeling like, 
oh man, something is so wrong here with me. But I want to be a trader and I want to be a successful trader because that's what I want to be and what I want to do. So I have to find a solution here. So of course, there are a lot of, lot of situations um, I have been in, which were really, let's say, uncomfortable. And I remember one which was really, really, really interesting. I learned a lot of it, but you know, it was, it was quite costly. So there were situations, <laughs> it's years ago, like 10 years or so. So there was a situation where I was like, I don't know, I didn't have that hand for the trades and I almost lost 50% of my account in a very fast time, even more, I guess. And then it was just like that moment where I something switched and I went over more to price action. I really, I was in the zone. This is really the zone. So I doubled this account and I doubled it again. And then wow. there was that trade. <laughs> that one. <laughs> okay. Where, where I was on the wrong side. And then I was like, I'm not, I'm so, so everything went so smooth. So it's, I cannot, no, it's not acceptable to have this loser here. <laughs> right? oh so God. everybody knows right now what's coming. So it's not acceptable to have this one to be a loser. So I just sit a bit in it and I just go on the reverses and, you know, this will come back. And I entered even more of the position. So I did, you know, I did every mistake. So I did the Martingale, I, I doubled the position, then I doubled it again, and I doubled it again. And I went so deep that I literally got a margin call. So I was really, it was, it was a buying position and it was really like dropping and it was dropping just, we're talking about minutes here, right? So <laughs> not weeks, okay. it was like minutes or days anyway. Yeah. So the, the market was completely dropping and I got a margin call. I got liquidated. The account was literally broke and gone. And this was a moment, guess what? Where the market reversed My. for the next rally. Right? So, so that, that was the situation and it had it all, right? It had it all. It had... First of all, bad trading, but not that bad. And it has like, you know, the whole way back and the whole experience of, yeah, I'm the biggest one, you know, finally I got it. And then there was this one situation that was my ego. It was Martin Gale. It was all the mistakes you can have in one situation. So if you want to go with a movie, that one would be the perfect one as a trader. So I learned a lot of it, a lot of it. And also, this is the experience why you never have to put all the money you have into your trading account, right? So just use yeah. that money you can afford to lose because if you get in a situation like that, you will not ex like to have the experience that you lose all of your life savings in one bad trade, right? So that, that also was for me the, the case that I just had the money I can afford. Everything was okay. I had a good job back then. So not a problem at all, but I learned so much about trading. I learned even more about myself. I think the last word you just said, you learn even more about yourself. It, it's the, the key point here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's also, we have a few minutes left and I will go, guys, there are lots and lots of questions, but I will just pick up a few of them. And again, uh, apologies in advance if I don't read aloud your question. Um, what is the best market for beginners? That's a good question, actually. It yeah. is. I definitely would not recommend the Nasdaq 100 because this one can be a beast. And if you, you know, if you're if you're not familiar and comfortable with volatility and you know also getting stopped out because this happens, of course, then I would rather go to you know some something going more smooth, like let's say Dow Jones, maybe the DAX, but the DAX is not that easy either. Maybe you want to go for the Euro US dollar, which is very good if you want to go with the trend and go with pullbacks, 
reversals at resistance and support zones. This is quite nice to handle. And as a beginner, I definitely would not recommend to go into a five minutes chart. You want to go daily. You want to learn first about, first of all, about technical analysis. You want to learn about how everything works. You want to make the experience there in given time. And then you can go, let's say, one hour chart, and then you can go lower in your time frames. But don't try to be a trader on a five minutes chart in the first week. This will not be successful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And unfortunately, most of us, we learn it the hard way. That's true. And we try to, uh, let's say, put a level of protection to the traders. They come to us and we encourage them to learn from our experience. Yeah. And I think that's the most challenging for a human to learn from somebody else experience. It's uh, pretty True. interesting. Um, another question, Willand, any hours? Uh, do you have any hours? No time frame, hours. You prefer to monitor when trading Nasdaq? I think you already un, uh, yeah, mentioned the open. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, AM or PM? No. Um, AM or European Open. We are talking about European Open. Yeah, European Open. So both sides of the of the you know uh, both sides of of the markets are good for the open because everybody is going into this. So all the trades are being done. Then then you know after the open, you, after the morning comes lunch time. So everybody's lunch and you know then trading gets slower and actually. You know, as as I'm I'm a traveler, so I'm I'm traveling the world. I don't want to be in front of my screen the whole day. I want to experience the world, you know, the cities, the people. I want to experience everything. I just, you know, I just need some money for it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, slowly, slowly, we came to the end. I don't believe how this one hour went so fast. Honestly, yeah. it's. It's been one hour. Before we before we wrap up, uh, I would like to let the people know how to contact you, right? So right. just allow me to share the screen here and just go through your. Uh, that's your podcast, right? Where people right. they can listen to all your podcasts here. Mm -hmm. So I'll share this with the audience. Then Torero op, Torero Traders School dot com. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's me. That's you. Yeah. In which side of the world? Oh, that's Hamburg. Well, <laughs> and you know, as I'm a nomad, of course, I know a lot of nomads too. And that one was uh happens to be you know a videographer and he i met him in hamburg in bangkok and another place in germany so okay by accident <laughs> also and so uh, here parts. people can find your trading strategy and right. they can contact you if they want to and also uh i will encourage everyone to follow you on uh, instagram because you put very valuable content here mm -hmm. and it will be good for traders, either new beginner, advanced traders, doesn't matter. Exactly. So at this stage, I would like to thank you very much for um, participating in the Market Talk series here. We host at Admirals. And thanks for sharing with us so valuable information and My insights pleasure. about your trading. And um, I wish you the best luck. And hopefully we're going to talk in another uh, webinar or something. Um, sure. Soon. <laughs> sure. So you, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks for the great audience and the great questions. Also, I just read right now um, all the greetings. So I'm very, you know, the, the very touched by this. So thanks for having me and I hope we continue and uh, also looking forward our next interview for the podcast. So let's see how it works. 
Absolutely, absolutely. We want to be in touch. Thank you so much. <laughs>